Nelly Mabaso again. In our last lesson, we looked at how the biosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere interacted with each other. We concluded that all systems on Earth are dependent on one another, and that if something changes in one system, it will affect the other systems. Today we're going to explore the properties of nitrogen and then look at the nitrogen cycle in more detail. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to draw a labeled diagram of the nitrogen cycle, recall some uses of nitrogen and explain how the nitrogen cycle sustains life. Well, we already know that nitrogen makes up 78,08% of the atmosphere and is the Earth's most abundant gas. It is also the fifth most abundant element in the universe. That must mean something, right? However, there is a shortage of useful nitrogen on Earth because organisms cannot use the nitrogen gas that is in the air. It's like being thirsty on the beach. Lots of water, but none that will quench your thirst. So, to change nitrogen gas to useful nitrogen that organisms can use, nitrogen fixation has to happen. Before we try to understand what nitrogen fixation is, let's first have a look at the microstructure of nitrogen. Nitrogen atoms are slightly smaller in volume than oxygen atoms because they have one less electron. Nitrogen is diatomic and very stable. The two atoms are joined with a triple bond with three pairs of sharing electrons. This is a very strong bond and the molecule is actually inert or very unreactive. This unreactive property of nitrogen gave it its name because the word nitrogen means without life. Nitrogen along with carbon, hydrogen and oxygen make up the bodies of plants and animals. Nitrogen forms proteins in plants and animals. In our bodies, proteins can be found in our hair, our nails and muscles. The genetic material or DNA of both plants and animals is formed mostly of protein. The only way for animals and humans to get the nitrogen we need to form proteins is by eating plants. So, nitrogen is all around us and inside us. It is more abundant in us, however, than it is in the universe. For every 1,000 grams of a human body, there are 26 grams of nitrogen, whereas for every 1,000 grams of universe, there is only one gram of nitrogen. Nitrogen is a gas at room temperature. When the temperature of nitrogen is lowered below its boiling point of 195,8 degrees Celsius, it condenses and forms an odorless, colorless liquid that looks like water. Objects are placed in liquid nitrogen, they freeze immediately. Let's try this. is not easily available because its melting point is very low, minus 209 degrees Celsius. However, research is currently exploring ways of using solid nitrogen as a fuel to launch spacecraft because solid rocket fuels are easier to handle than liquid fuels. Now that we know more about nitrogen, we need to move on and make sure we understand how nitrogen cycles on our planet. Here's a diagram of the whole cycle. It looks complicated, but I promise you, it isn't really. Let's go through it step by step. Organisms can only use nitrogen in the form of nitrates. When nitrogen is changed from its elemental form, N2, into a nitrate, we call this process nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen fixation can happen in three ways in the biosphere. Firstly, through lightning, in the atmosphere. Secondly, through bacteria living in the soil or roots of plants called legumes, like bean plants. And lastly, through industrial fixation. When lightning strikes, 
it releases a large amount of energy into the atmosphere. This energy is able to break the bonds between nitrogen atoms. These atoms then combine with oxygen in the air to form nitrogen monoxide, NO. The nitrogen monoxide then combines with water vapor to produce nitric acid, HNO3. When it rains, the nitric acid falls to earth and makes nitrate ions available for plants to absorb. This process of producing nitric acid is essential for life on our planet. Without nitrates, there would be no food chain because the plants wouldn't grow and animals would not have them to eat. But sometimes the formation of nitric acid is harmful. Oxides of nitrogen are also formed in cars and factories by the reaction of nitrogen gas and oxygen gas at high temperatures. These oxides of nitrogen also combine with water vapor in the atmosphere to form nitric acid in the clouds. When it rains, this rain will be acidic. Too much nitric acid damages the biosphere. I want to show you an experiment so you can see how easy it is to form nitric acid from nitrogen monoxide. I have filled these two syringes with colorless gas. This one contains oxygen while the other contains nitrogen monoxide. I have connected these syringes with some tubing. Now watch what happens when I gently push the oxygen into the syringe containing nitrogen oxide. The two colorless gases reacted to form a brown gas, nitrogen dioxide. Next I want to check how nitrogen dioxide reacts with water. I have added a few drops of universal indicator to this beaker of water. The water is neutral, but watch what happens when I allow a few bubbles of nitrogen dioxide to react with the water. The nitrogen dioxide reacted with the water to form a solution of nitric acid. You cannot see any brown gas present, but notice the color of the universal indicator changed from green to orange, showing that the new solution is acidic. So now that you have a clear idea of how quickly nitric acid can form, let's get back to our cycle. The next nitrogen fixes are nitrogen fixing bacteria that are found around the roots of legume plants such as bean and pea plants. Some of these bacteria change nitrogen gas to ammonium ions and other bacteria change the ammonium ions into nitrates. If the plants are then eaten by herbivores, the nitrogen is absorbed by the animal and used to build protein. The nitrogen is later returned to the soil by bacteria that decay the animal's feces or urine or by bacteria decomposing the animal after its death. The nitrogen in plants will also return to the soil when the plant dies and are decomposed by bacteria. So, Bacteria change the plant and animal nitrogen that is in the form of proteins and DNA back into the nitrates in the soil. Plants can then use these nitrates. During decomposition, bacteria can also change nitrogen locked in plant and animal DNA back into nitrogen gas. This process is called denitrification. So, nitrates end up being available to all plants, whether they are bean plants or not, from bacteria decaying either the remains of plants and animals or from bacteria decomposing animal excretion. Farmers also put fertilizers that contain nitrates on their land for the plants to use. This is where the industrial nitrogen fixation by humans comes in. We fix nitrogen to make fertilizers, plastics and cleaning agents. Why do you think that we make fertilizers? Why don't you have a class discussion about why they are so important? Well, I hope you realize that we need to feed the large populations of people on this planet and so the production of fertilizers is important to be used to grow healthy plants in large quantities. If you get the chance, I want you to look at a bag of fertilizer in a garden center or on a farm. You should notice that the form that nitrogen comes in fertilizers is ammonium nitrate. Although this is a very effective fertilizer, you'll see in the next lesson that there are some concerns about the environmental impact of using chemical fertilizers like this. So, how do we make ammonium nitrate? Well, first of all, you need ammonia. In 1908, a clever German chemist by the name of Fritz Haber 
developed the process to make ammonia on a large scale by using nitrogen from the atmosphere. The process is called the Haber process. In this process, nitrogen gas is combined with hydrogen gas. This has to be done at fairly high pressure and temperatures, otherwise the reaction is too slow. Some of the gas does not react, so it is recycled, but the ammonia that is formed is cooled so that it turns to a liquid. What happens to the ammonia next? Well, it is added to oxygen to make nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide, and then these gases are added to water to form nitric acid, like we did in our experiment earlier. The nitrate ion from the nitric acid is added to ammonia to make ammonium nitrate. 85% of all the ammonia produced is used to make fertilizers, 10% is used to make plastics and explosives, and 5% is used to make nylon, which is a fiber used to make stockings, clothes or carpets. My goodness, but nitrogen is everywhere, a bit like water really. So let's do a short recap of what we have learned today. We have looked at the properties of nitrogen and where it is found on Earth. We have investigated the nitrogen cycle in a bit more detail and performed an experiment to show how easy it is to change nitrogen monoxides into an acid. Lastly, we investigated the Haber process in which nitrogen is fixed in industry to make nitrogen available for us to use. In the last lesson of this series, we are going to investigate other uses of nitrogen and how life would not be the same without them. We are then going to investigate how the use of these nitrogen products can harm our environment. In your task for today, I want you to revise the nitrogen cycle by drawing your own flow diagram that shows how a nitrogen atom would get from the air into our own DNA. I want you to include all possible ways by referring to the nitrogen cycle that we discussed today. Until next time. Yeah.